Esophageal stricture. Definition. An esophageal stricture, peptic stricture, refers to the abnormal narrowing of the esophageal lumen. It often presents as dysphagia commonly described by patients as difficulty swallowing. Stricture formation can be due to inflammation, fibrosis or neoplasia involving the esophagus and often posing damage to the mucosa and or submucosa. The esophagus loses distensibility with stricture formation, and this may be localized or diffused throughout the length of the esophagus. Etiology A stricture is either benign or malignant. Benign stricture follows a slow and insidious course, while malignant stricture develops rapidly. The following classification and list of common and uncommon causes for stricture formation in the esophagus can guide healthcare workers in their approach to management. Benign strictures Corrosive substance ingestion, accidental ingestion of, or suicidal poisoning with, household cleaning products are not uncommon occurrences. Substance ingestion could cause anything from mild injury to extensive full thickness necrosis of the esophagus. Stricture development is a common consequence of ingesting such as toxic substances. Eosinophilic esophagitis, EOE it represents a distinct chronic, local immune-mediated esophageal disease clinically characterized by dysphagia and histologically by eosinophilic predominant inflammation. Drug-induced esophagitis, many medications can cause pill-induced esophagitis. Common culprits include NSAIDs, potassium chloride tablets, and tetracycline antibiotics, among other medications. Radiation injury, radiation therapy can cause esophageal stricture as a side effect. Radiation targeting the cervical or thoracic regions can cause damage to the surrounding normal soft tissue and result in one of the most common late complications, median duration of six months, called radiation-induced esophageal stricture. Iatrogenic stricture post-endoscopic therapy, Upper GI endoscopy is commonly an option for diagnostic and therapeutic interventions involving the esophagus. A side effect of these interventions includes damage to the underlying regenerative cell layer, leading to fibrosis and stricture formation. The risk of stricture increases with extensive circumferential resection. Anastomotic stricture Certain early-stage esophageal cancers and head and neck cancers are managed with an esophagectomy with a high-end esophagogastrostomy or bubble loop interposition. Such procedures have a post-operative risk of anastomotic stricture formation at the anastomosis. Chemotherapy-induced esophageal stricture In pediatric patients, it is reported as a rare event and a result of chemotherapy treatment, but it has been described to possibly have a multifactorial etiology including infectious and inflammatory factors causing esophagitis. Thermal injury. This is a rare cause of stricture formation in patients who accidentally drink hot edible foods and fluids, especially coffee or tea. Infectious esophagitis. Viral infections with cytomegalovirus, CMV, herpes simplex, HSV, human immune deficiency virus, HIV, and fungal infections with candida can cause esophageal mucosal inflammation and stricture formation. They tend to occur in immunocompromised patients, and odinophagia is usually present. Other rare etiologies Prolonged use of nasogastric tube Collagen vascular diseases such as scleroderma or SLE Benign mucosal pemphigoid Graft versus host disease Esophageal web in Plumervinson syndrome Crohn disease, tuberculosis, malignant stricture, esophageal adenocarcinoma, esophageal squamous cell carcinoma, metastatic esophageal neoplasm, usually from lung cancer, clinical manifestations. Regardless of the nature of the stricture, patients typically present with one or all of the following symptoms. Dysphagia, food impaction, ordinophagia chest pain, heartburn, bitter or acid taste in the mouth, choking, coughing, shortness of breath, frequent burping or hiccups, throwing up blood, weight loss. The most relevant symptom is progressive dysphagia to solid food, and this sometimes progresses to involve semi-solid and liquid foods. Pathophysiology. In peptic stricture, 
These pathophysiological changes happen as a result of exposure of the esophageal mucosa to reflux acid peptic content from the stomach. This reflux can exacerbate with the weakening of lower esophageal sphincter or impaired esophageal motility or both. Hiatal hernia contributes in a significant way as an independent risk factor in the pathophysiology of peptic strictures, given that hiatal hernia presents in 85% of patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease with the stricture. Delayed gastric emptying and excessive pepsin secretion could contribute to the process. Similarly, most of all other benign strictures result from chronic, long-standing esophagitis secondary to different causes as described in the section on etiology above. Malignant stricture develops from intrinsic direct proliferation and invasion of cancer cells from the luminal mucosa. Adenocarcinoma commonly arises from the lower part of the esophagus, and squamous cell carcinoma frequently occurs in the middle and upper part of the esophagus. Very rarely, the direct growth of lung tumor mass or mediastinal lymph node enlargement can also produce stricture. Diagnostic Evaluation History and Physical Examination A careful clinical evaluation, including a directed history and physical examination, can suggest information about the underlying cause of a suspected or endoscopically diagnosed stricture. The following historical information can also help understand the cause of stricture formation and guide management. A known medical history of GRD, Barrett esophagus, hiatal hernia, or medication use that could cause peptic ulcers and GI irritations, any of these are risk factors for peptic stricture. The patient has a history of recent caustic product ingestion. A prior history of endoscopic treatment or esophageal surgery for any esophageal pathology. Such patients are at risk for developing anastomotic or iatrogenic stricture. There is a history of radiation therapy for any prior head and neck or chest malignancy. A history of medication use including alendronate, tetracycline or other antibiotics, NSAIDs and many others that predispose one to pill-induced esophagitis. It can be diagnosed with an X-ray while the patient swallows barium, called a barium study of the esophagus, by a computerized tomographer scan, a biopsy, or by an endoscopy. Barium swallow, which requires a patient to swallow a solution containing barium. X-rays are taken while the barium moves down the esophagus. If a stricture is present, the barium may become stuck or slows down. Endoscopy, if the doctor suspects that a structural abnormality is present. A narrow tube called an endoscope is inserted into the esophagus. The endoscope has a light and tiny camera at one end so the doctor can observe the inside of the esophagus. Esophageal manometry, if no structural abnormality is detected. It is performed to measure pressure waves inside the esophagus. The presence of unusually large numbers of simultaneous contractions in the lower esophagus is the major indicator of spasms. Esophageal motility test, measures muscular strength and coordination. The test is performed by inserting a small tube through the nose into the esophagus. The tube contains pressure-sensitive transducers, which remain in the esophagus after the tube is withdrawn. The patient swallows a small amount of water, about a teaspoon, at regular intervals to allow the transducers to measure the contractions during peristalsis. The test can also detect whether there is an abnormality in the valve at the lower end of the esophagus, lower esophageal sphincter. Management If it is caused by esophagitis, in turn caused by an underlying infection, it is commonly treated by treating the infection, typically with antibiotics. In order to open the stricture, a surgeon can insert a bougie, a weighted tube used to dilate the constricted areas in the esophagus. It can sometimes be treated with other medications. For example, an H2 antagonist, e.g. ranitidine, or a proton pump inhibitor, e.g. omeprazole, can treat underlying acid reflux disease. Esophageal stricture dilation. Mechanical, push type or bougie they come with a variety of sizes and are made up of different types of materials such as rubber. Maloney Bougie Dilator can be freely passed without the use of the guide wire. While Savari Gilead has a guide wire to assist in the passage. Balloon, 
Expansion of a balloon produces radial force to dilate the lumen. Different sizes are available, and a balloon dilator gets passed through the scope TTS. Newer balloon dilators from having an inbuilt guide wire and also allow for three different size expansions without changing the balloon. Use of adjunctive methods. At present two main adjunctive treatment methods are employed based on preference, intralesion injection of steroid, or oral steroid gel use and endoscopic stricturoplasty. Steroids help in decreasing the inflammation related to injury from dilation and, hence, reduce the chance of restenosis. Esophageal stents. Stents are often reserved for malignant stricture and refractory benign strictures. The goal of stent placement is to hold the stricture open for prolonged periods, causing the stricture, or the tissue around it, to remodel so that the stricture does not recur after stent removal. In malignant stricture, this could be either used for complete palliation in case of advanced cancer or temporary palliation in cases of ongoing neoadjuvant treatment. Surgical management. Surgical resection is reserved for malignant disease causing esophageal stricture or benign conditions recalcitrant to less aggressive forms of medical and or endoscopic therapy. When surgery is necessary for benign refractory peptic strictures, an anti-flux procedure is selectively done to prevent further stenosis. Extensive surgery may be necessary in cases of malignant stricture, where concurrent removal of a mass also takes place if staging is favorable. In such cases, partial or complete esophagectomy, with gastric tube pull-up or bubble loop interposition and anastomosis is performed. Otherwise, palliative surgical approaches are considered to relieve symptoms or obstruction and to provide a route for enteral nutrition distal to a stricture, usually via gastrostomy tube placement. Complications Untreated esophageal stricture-related complications Food impaction Food particle aspiration Asthma from aspiration Severe chest pain Esophageal perforation from long-standing inflammation Fistula formation Iatrogenic complication from stricture dilation and stent placement Esophageal perforation Bleeding Hemorrhage Anesthesia-related complications, such as respiratory failure, sedation, aspiration pneumonia, bacteremia, 22% of cases develop transient bacteremia from esophageal dilation. It is usually associated with malignant stricture dilation and multiple dilations. Periprocedural antibiotics are usually recommended to avoid this. Restricture formation. New stricture formation. Traumatic stent removal Epithelization of the uncovered stent Displacement of stent proximally which could potentially cause choking sensation and difficulty in breathing So guys, thanks for watching my video You can like and comment on my video But don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel to watch quality content like this Thank you guys